Hi, this is Mary from Open Helix with this week's tip of the week. Today we're going to be talking about the new and improved OMIM interface, but I won't have time to cover all of the details about that site now, so be sure to check out our blog at blog.openhelix.com for additional details about the site, the links to the site, references associated with it, and stuff like that. So be sure to come by and check that out. So today we're going to be talking about OMIM. Now, almost everyone in biomedical research has uh, explored OMIM at some point. Um, at the NCBI, that's hosted OMIM for years and years. And people might be used to using it there, and there's a lot of great reasons to use it over there, because it's linked to all the other NCBI resources, it's all integrated with other stuff. Um, however, if you go to look at the um, home page now, right now, you'll see that um, the they haven't been updating the OMIM data underneath for months now. So since February, they haven't been able to update that. And that's because they're working out um, the, the relationship with the new site. There's a new official site for OMIM that's been developed by the OMIM team. And that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. So the new official site for OMIM looks like this. It's OMIM.org. And you can access the, um, the same kind of data that you're used to seeing at OMIM that wealth of curated information um, that, that you're used to seeing in OMIM that's been generated over decades. So you now have access to that at the new site at OMIM.org. And the folks at, uh, who are responsible for uh, maintaining OMIM are encouraging resource providers. If you link to OMIM, you should be linking to this new site now. This is the official site going forward. And I don't know if it's going to be um, worked out that the um, updates will go over to NCBI, but um, if you're looking for the most up-to-date information right now, you should be checking out the new site here. Now, a lot of things you'll uh, find similar to um, uh, the old site. You have a quick search mechanism here, so there's a box you could type in your query. And I'm just going to show you a, a quick search for a, a gene, APC. Um, it's a gene I always like to use because the, there's so much information about it. Now, once you type this in, you'll have access to um, additional suggested query items. I'm just going to use the plain old APC right now. If I click search, I'll get a search results list. You could also choose to do an advanced search for different features here. Um, I won't be showing that today, but be sure to come back later and try those out and see the different things that you can ask for additionally in the advanced search options. But right now, let's just do a quick search for APC. I'll click search here, and you'll get a results list. And you can see here that you have the, the term APC is found in a number of different records. I'm just going to go to the APC gene for our example, but you can come back later and explore some of these other things. And you'll notice, notice that you have access to some additional features over here, but I'm just going to go right to the gene page and look at everything that we have. So here we are on the gene page, and if there's a uh, synonym information available, that would be um, in the alternative title section over here, and you can see that we do have uh, synonyms here in this case. You can access cytogenetic location here. You can go to the MIM map. You can also um, call up the UCSC genome browser by using this genome coordinates link. And what's really cool about that is if I click this link, I won't do it. I won't do it now because it takes a while to load. But you get a page over at UCSC on the current assembly. So this is the February 2009 assembly, and it shows the region you're looking at. But it also automatically loads the OMIM track. And some people might not be aware that there's an OMIM track available on the UCSC Genome Browser. And if you click that link from an OMIM page, it automatically loads that up. So that's a very handy feature now. You can look at the phenotype table, the phenotype relationship table. So in this um, uh, region, you'll have a number of different phenotypes that have been um, identified. And you can link to those pages as well. Now, this page is a really, really long page. It's a well-studied gene, and it's the same information you've known, you've come to trust over the years uh, from OMIM. As before, you can access the different aspects of the page by clicking on the, um, the links that you might hear. Maybe you're interested in the cloning features. Maybe you're interested in the the, uh, the features that are here in the genotype and phenotype correlations. So you could access any portion of the page in the table of contents section like you always did. You have a bunch of external links, though, that are very, very handy. So here, you can access different browsers to look around. You can look, again, at the DNA sequences from here. You can look at protein information. You could look at gene information, which might contain a whole bunch of other additional information that you might be interested in. A couple of tools that they didn't have access to before. Um, BioGPS is uh, one of our favorite tools, and FarmGKB as well. So there's some new links that are available over here on the new OMIM site. And you can also link to other features as well. Now, I, I won't have time to go into all of the, the features at OMIM. Um, I would like to click one feature, though. I'll click the gene map. I always liked to use the gene map to look around at genomic regions I was interested in, and you can still do that from here. So check out the um, new OMIM site, the new and improved features. Um, I think there's a lot of great things over here. And I also love the feature where you can select the language now and translate the, with Google Translate. So check out new OMIM and see if you like it. Thanks very much for your time.